Hey everybody, it is Lex Marie here. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, okay. Um, so, I wanted to do a reading and I am literally in my pajamas right now and it is the afternoon time, but it is Sunday, the Lord's Day, and we just do errands and um, nothing. So I'm cool with that. Um, okay, so I wanted to do a reading on Larry Moncado. Uh, he was, um, his human's remains were found behind a cooler at an Iowa supermarket, and he's been missing since November 28th of 2009. Um, and he was 25 years old. So um, if you want to go into it deeper, you can. There is an interview from his father saying that they want um, more answers 10 years later. Um, but, okay, so I didn't want to look further. I didn't even watch the interview, you know, until afterward. I wanted to see, like, where his head is at versus, like, in general, just to see what was going on. Um, there was a lot of questions that I had, like, why didn't anybody smell him, his decomposing body while he was behind the freezer before the store closed? Why didn't the parents, why did the parents only make a report the day after he left in a snowstorm with no shoes on? And, you know, barely closed, disoriented because he was off of his medication. Um, and they also said in the, I first, I first seen the interview and it said that the parents said uh, that he was, you know, mad or something and they didn't know why. And then he left uh, disoriented and that, that day. But then later on, I seen an article today saying that the parents said that they got into an argument, like the parents and himself got an argument. And then on top of him being disoriented or not on his meds from what they said. Um, and, that, and I seen that today after this reading. So that kind of validated, you know, what's happening here. And I don't, I'm going to be straightforward with it only because he is not okay right now. And I don't think he's crossed over because of this. Um, so I'm going to, you know, continue with this session and continue with him on my own time and help him cross over and do the things that he needs to do. Because, I mean... I had to stop the session. You know, I'm an empathic psychic. I um, I was so uh, I was so scared for this for for him and how he feels and felt and it's very very sad. And I I you know I'm gonna go into mental health later, um, because you know you got to understand that you know some people have support when they have mental issues and some people don't. And I will tell you right now that this man did not have help, um, not the help that he needed. And and so, but. So the first image I received was literally parents, the word parents. And I'm not saying that the parents were to blame, nobody's to blame, you know, you know, I'm not saying anybody's to blame. Um, but I'm going to say my messages straightforward and however you take them and however, you know, it said is what is said. I'm going to speak for this man. He, he was very clear. And so I'm going to speak for him and, you know, so parents, um, so did not fully understand what was happening, but they didn't do enough either. Um, he needed more help and everyone ignored it. And then I, at that point, I just was like, you know, I, I talked to him and I was like, I'm, I'm sorry that no one was there. You know, I'm here to speak to you. And, you know, a lot of people care and are wondering what, what happened to you. And so, you know, a lot of people care right now. So that's what's most important. Um, and I'm sorry that that happened to you while you were alive. But right now, um, you know, you, you know, just talking to him and I will help him cross over. But right now I just need to let him know that it was okay. And then after I said that, I got the words, nobody cared enough. And that was the part, nobody cared enough. And that's what a lot of people say, um, you know, when they have mental illnesses is that sometimes they feel like nobody cared enough. And so I was just like, okay. So I went into what was the fight about? Because originally they said, oh, he, um, he was mad or something leaving the house. But they, there was no, yes, it was the parents that got in a fight with him. And then, so once I realized that the parents and him got into a fight, then I said, what was the fight about? I saw an image of a white dish, and that could mean uh, going through hard... Oh, no, goodness. Why did that happen? Okay. It's my little light thingy that I like because it, it's so dark outside, it's about to rain. Okay. So... I saw an image of a white dish. Could mean going through hard times with money. Maybe the argument set him over the edge because he felt like he was not doing enough. Like he wasn't enough. Um, yeah, this is going dead, so that's fine. We won't do this anymore. We're not, we're not going to do this. Yeah, no, not doing it. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. I hope you guys can see me anyway. So, um, it made me sad at that point when he said it wasn't enough and his illness was also a factor in that. So, 
it was a lot of like, uh, he felt like he wasn't enough, but the argument was about it. Cause you know, he was working at a supermarket, he was 25. Um, they could have said, you know, little things to trigger, like, you know, you're not doing enough for this house or just something, something that he felt like he wasn't enough. And then I got a sad feeling. And so he felt kind of hopeless, you know, at that point. And he remembers being and feeling scared and stuck. And so it could mean a symbolism of he felt stuck in his mind or he was actually feeling and being scared and stuck in that spot that he was in, in the, in the cooler. Um, let's see. Okay. Sorry. I had to change something. Can't be in pitch black. Okay. So, so he remembers feeling scared and stuck. Okay. So I started asking, did anybody know, uh, where you were there? Were you there before you passed away? Did any, did anyone see you? Were you there originally and then placed there or were, you know, what, what, what was the actual thing? Like, did you die there or did someone place you there is where I was getting at. Um, that the method, I was getting more, a lot of words from him and it was, uh, yes, I was seen. No one asked. So that gives me an, another clear indication that he did feel like nobody cared. And, and to be honest with you, no one cared enough. So it happens in people's lifetimes, you know, and it's, it's okay to admit it. You know, uh, some people have some port and some don't in this lifetime. And he was one of them. Um, did you die behind the freezer alone or did someone do this to you is what I was kind of getting at. Um, I did start feeling cold. So I did, I kind of do understand that. I think that he originally died of hypothermia or, um, was what it was a, an issue. It was a problem, um, that he, it kind of contributed to everything. If it, if it wasn't the cause of death, um, I saw numerous images of forks and whenever I got that, it was more of like him being poked at by numerous people before passing. Um, so it made me believe, you know, that there was people around him and plus his coworkers and, um, maybe family or whoever didn't understand him. Um, so he was being poked at by numerous people before passing. Were coworkers at fault? Maybe not. But um, everybody knew he needed help and he that he needed a friend and nobody did anything. They kind of just, you know. And then um, if you go in there with no socks and shoes on and you're disoriented, yeah, you know, they said that people came in and out of the store, but I want people to understand that, you know, no coworkers have came forward and actually made an interview and, you know, and I think everybody just has guilt um, because of what happened to hit this man and that they could have stopped something, you know, feeling a little bit of guilt. And yeah, you could have, you know, that let's just be straightforward. You could have, but you didn't. So, um, you know, we need more details on that, but this is what he's feeling and this is what is true. Um, and, and then I got the need to say that he needs to find a video. They need to find the video or this will not be solved correctly. And why is there not a video a footage of, of this? Um, why didn't anybody look at the video footage the day after the, you know, what happened? I, I just, it's, it's really odd to me and it's, you know, so it does make me believe that people know what happened to an extent and are too, too, feel too guilty to, um, so I didn't want to be that person and I don't want to be that person, but it's a little bit of tea. I'm telling you straightforward, um, because, um, it's sad. It's sad that people allowed it, um, knowing, knowing that he needed help. So you do need to come forward and have more details for this man, not for you, for him. And then it'll be for you because you feel guilty. So let's just, you know, be straightforward on that. But otherwise, um, I'm so sad for this man. And so I, I'm, I'm going to continue with, I may not, I don't know if I'm going to do another session on video. I may, you know, help him cross over otherwise, but um, he needs to know that it's okay and that he does have help and that he, he has people here. And so, um, that love him and care about him and, and that he, and no one, you know, mental, Ill, mental illness is a problem is a thing in this world. And 10 years ago, you know, it wasn't as open as it is now. And I understand that. Um, but he, he needs to know that now people, you know, he, he can get help. He can get help. Um, even though he's a spirit, he can get help. And, um, and so that's, you know, that's why I'm doing this reading, but, I just want to let everybody know, um, his name is Larry Moncado and just keep him in your mind. And, you know, if you, if you meditate or if you do clairvoyant work or any, any, even if you don't, if you're not, uh, just a little bit spiritual, let him know that he's okay and that you're here for him and everybody is here for him and that I'm going to continue to work on him and everything's going to be okay. Um, I think he needs to hear that from numerous people, even that they don't know, even if you don't know him, it's even better, you know? Um, but I love you guys and I will have a reading next time. Bye.